Hello developers! Today I would like to talk about a very powerful tool and show you an example of how it can save your time. But before we get to the details, let's imagine a situation in which you start writing a new application, for example in Oracle IDF. Usually you need a new clean database in which you create tables, packages and other necessary stuff. Ok, but how we can get this database? You can download and install it directly on your operating system. You can create a virtual machine image and install the database on it. Or you can create a docker image with an oracle database and then run a container based on that image. Let's take a closer look at these methods. The first method is the easiest one but it allows you to create only one database instance. In addition, the database integrates too much into the operating system. For example, it requires libraries that you might not want to install. Using the virtual machine is much more elastic than the previous method. You can create as many virtual machines as you want. And because of virtualization, it's easy to copy and run the virtual machine on other host machine. But each virtual machine requires a lot of disk space and a lot of RAM. This is where Docker comes to help. It allows both quick and easy image creation as well as minimizes unnecessary memory overhead. Let's see it in practice. All commands and text-based tutorial can be found in the link in the description below. We start with the preparation of virtual machine with Linux. I chose Ubuntu because it's easy to manage Debian-based distribution. The next step is to install the Docker.io package. To enable the user to manage containers, add him to the Docker group. I encourage you to create your own database image. However, for the purposes of the tutorial, we will use one of the public images. Information about the image can be found on page hub.docker.com. This is a very valuable source of information. You will see how to use a given image and information about exposed ports, user and passwords. So let's pull the chosen image. The download may take a few minutes because the image weighed over 2 GB. By typing docker images you can check what images you already have. The next step is to create a database container. We may use configuration from the side. I only change exposed ports for above 10,000 and the name of the container. As you probably noticed, I made a typo in the container name. I could just rename the container, but I will show you how you can delete and then create it again. It's time to start the container. As you can see, the container started 4 seconds ago. I will use SQL Developer to test the database connection. Let's configure the connections to the Sys and Human Resources users. As you can see, the HR account is locked. 
so let's unlock it. Let's just do a short test. Ok, everything works fine. Go to localhost 10081 apex. Let's try to login. During the first login we are asked to change the password. Let's do it. And login again. It looks like it works. Let's run gdeveloper. Create new application with default settings. Configure connection to Azure Schema. Let's add some business components from tables. At the first time, copy the database connection. In our case, we want to show employees table, so let's create employees entity and view object based on it. Let's create index page. Add some read on the employees table. Let's start the application. As you can see, it's run without errors and it works. Let's check what happened if we shut down the database. We got error. Let's start the container again. As you can see, after a moment the application get back to normal. That's all I've prepared for today. And if you have an idea for another interesting topic, please leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my channel to keep informed of new videos. And as always, thank you for watching.